Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Trying to make sense of the crazy Arizona real estate market. And we're going to talk a little bit about next year and hearing things like balanced and normal. Well, what's going to be normal next year? Volatility. And I'll explain that in a little bit of detail here. Right now, you can rule out seasonality. In other words, you see people asking questions like, well, is January normally a good time to list my home? Normally, yes, but nothing's been normal for the past two and a half years. So we don't even know how to answer that question right now. Um, normally, we have more listings that come on in January and then more price reductions in February. Normally, December is a harder time to uh, list a home because you don't get that much traffic. But the people that are looking are serious. So I don't ever write off the month of December because some people have to move at the beginning of the year. But there's some economic stuff that's out there that is really increasing the volatility. I mean, you, you've seen what's happened to interest rates. And we need to look at what's going on across the pond over there in England. And uh, right now, they went ahead, the, the, the new prime minister said some things that upset the bond market. And interest rates went up one day, like from 6.6 .6 to 7.08. And I thought, oh boy, here we go. Well, then these pension funds raise their ugly head this week. And what happens is the pension funds, you know, they're funded by people that are working to pay people that are retiring. Well, guess what? There's way more people retiring than there are people that are working. So in order for pension funds to, to make up for that lack of money that's coming in from the working folks, they need to invest it. So they were just investing it in bonds and treasuries, and they were doing fine until rates started climbing up and then they weren't doing so great so they invested them in things called derivatives which is kind of like what happened to our mortgage market in 2006 and 7 mortgages were packaged into derivatives and these are highly leveraged positions so if interest rates keep going up and they're packaged in derivatives they get these margin calls kind of like you buying a stock as an option and you're you're laying out uh, in the futures market, you're putting down $1,000 to control $20,000 in stocks and it goes the wrong way, you get a margin call. They say, all right, you, you owe us $15,000, we're shutting this down. And that's what was about to happen to these pensioners, these pension managers in, uh, in England. Lo and behold, the Central Bank of England came out and said they had to save it, kind of like Lehman Brothers. Sound familiar? They came in and said, we are going to reinstitute quantitative easing for the near future with unlimited purchasing, whatever it takes. Oh boy, that made interest rates come back down. But all that's doing is kicking the can down the road. Now, we're kind of in a pickle here where we have uh, the federal government, the central bank is trying to rein in inflation. And in this march to do that, it says here, as the Fed is viewing in part lagging economic data, forward estimates for inflation are falling quickly. That's because the economy is faltering as liquidity dries up. So what they're saying is the Fed is fighting inflation up here, this blue line, and the market is saying, well, you've already put on the brakes. We think inflation is going to be down here quicker than you think so there is a fear that they may be putting on the brakes too hard and that they'll have to use the new buzzword that's out there in the market now which is called pivot i don't think that'd be great for housing if all of a sudden our rates came down to four percent again which brings you to another topic what's normal four percent is not normal We've just been acting in a low rate environment the past two years of the rates were just, I remember somebody even asked the question, um, when do you think we'll see a 2.75 interest rate so I can refinance? And I said, never. I mean, we just passed the most historic low interest rate environment I've ever seen in my lifetime. Now, my kids might see that again, but I'll never see it. And uh, so that's a number that I don't think we can pin the word normal too anymore and what's happened is you know our sales this is sales month to date this september we're sitting here at a sales rate of 3506 versus last year at 5548 
and we were that low in 2014 and 2008 and we all know what happened in 2008 and then here's the deal where our monthly average average <coughs> here we go again sales price is coming down it kind of went up a little bit and it's coming down but then you look at the list price and the list price is almost at 2021 20, levels list prices are a leading indicator of what the sales price is going to be next month so if you're listing your home now you need to be looking at what your home's value was in 2021 and getting there as quickly as you can otherwise you're not going to be competitive and when we go back next month and we look at the sales numbers they're going to be very close to 2021 numbers why because that's where the list pricing is headed now here's what buyers are doing they're sitting out because they can't afford it the rates went up and we reached an affordability wall and it's not that they're on strike it's just that they, they have a payment tolerance and that has been exceeded it's like going to a used car lot you have in your mind i'm gonna pay 350 bucks a month for a car and you tell the guy, I, I want that car. I want my payment to be under $350. He comes back and says, here, it's $425. No, go back, talk to the manager again. Come back. I want it to be $350. Comes back and says, it's $410. And you just get in your car and leave. Well, the real estate market's no different. You had a payment, a payment you can afford. The national average for the median price house in the United States in January, you needed $60,000 to buy the average price home in the US. Now you need 95,000 annual income. Well, nobody got a $35,000 range, so they're saying, you can't, you can't get me that house for this payment? I guess I'll just rent, because they can't afford it. So they're waiting, and they're waiting for that payment to get to that level that they can afford it. The other thing that's happening is, you know, it used to be using the car lot analogy, you go to a car lot, you know, a couple of years ago, there were only 10 cars, but there were 40 of you looking at them. Now, there's four of you looking at them, and there's 100 cars. So you're walking around, taking your time, so I'll get one in the payment matches what I want, and you see all these resale homes that are out there, but then across the streets, this brand new lot with nothing but new cars and a big banner that says, low financing options free gas for a year whoa better go check that out that's what's happening in housing going to resale housing in some of these areas like queen creek and maricopa and buckeye and uh these new construction homes are just throwing everything at you but the kitchen sink so now you're trying to list your home and these guys are busting out with these great interest rates and these programs and these incentives of up to sixty thousand dollars and they just dropped the price by fifty to seventy five thousand makes your task a little bit harder and that by all means is not normal so as we look for normal again uh, we're just going to see volatility so getting into the next year just know what your number is, know what your game plan is, and know that there are going to be a lot of ups and downs in this market. I do not like the new sales term that's out there that says, marry the house and date the rate. In other words, get your house and just view your interest rate as temporary because the opportunity is coming where you're going to be able to refinance it down the road. Nobody knows for sure. And I've had a lot of bad dates. <laughs> so you, you just need to be careful. If... The rate, if you can live with that rate and you can live with that payment and that's the house you want, pull the trigger. But don't go in under a, um, an exuberant assumption that you can refinance in a year because it's it's hard to tell. Now, will the Fed come in and change things? If, if things start sliding and going south, as this gentleman said in this article here, for the Federal Reserve, Inflation is the enemy it must defeat. However, while high inflation is detrimental to economic growth, market instability is far more insidious. That's why the Fed rushed to bail out banks in 2008. Unfortunately, we doubt the Fed has a stomach for market instability. As such, we doubt they will hike rates as much as the market currently expects. One man's opinion, so we will watch and see what happens. But you expect to see rates go up and down, up and down, up and down, I think, for the remainder of the year. So save this video and come back and watch it in six months, and we'll see who's, uh, if it's as volatile as I think it's going to be. Take on the day and have a great week. And don't forget to subscribe.